So today we're going to be talking about autoimmune retinopathy. And you might be wondering why this would come to neuro-ophthalmology. And the reason it comes to neuro-ophthalmology is because the retina often looks normal in the beginning. And there's two types of this autoimmune retinopathy. One is associated with cancer, which we call cancer-associated retinopathy. Sometimes the malignancy is melanoma, which we call melanoma-associated retinopathy. And if you don't have any cancer, it's an autoimmune-mediated retinopathy or an autoimmune retinopathy and related optic neuropathy. So the main thing is identifying the patient clinically. Usually it's bilateral and symmetric loss of vision. It can be central or peripheral. It tends to be relatively subacute and occur bilaterally and simultaneously. Initially, the fundus looks normal. Over time, there'll be arterial narrowing, RPE change, and the nerve return pale. But in the beginning, the fundus looks normal. The key and differentiating features are the presence of the photopsia, which is the patient says they see a flashing light or a sparkle or something. So that photopsia is an uncommon presenting presenting finding in patients who have optic neuropathy. And in patients with retinopathy, they might have night blindness, which is nyctalopia, or they might have day blindness, which is hemorrhalopia. And so either day or night blindness are retinal symptoms because the optic nerve really doesn't care that much whether it's day or night, but the rods and the cones care whether it's day or night. And the typical scotoma is a ring scotoma in retina disease. So it tends to be a, a paraphobial ring or a bullseye type of appearance or a target type of appearance in the visual field. But it can be a central scotoma or just diffuse generalized depression. So for these patients, we really have to establish the localization and that usually means we have to use electrophysiology. So we typically are gonna do some combination of VEP, ERG, and multifocal ERG. If it's just the central vision, a central scotoma, then we're gonna do the MERG. If it's a full field effect, we're gonna do an ERG. So for CAR and MAR, they often have decreased full field ERGs and decreased VEPs. For cone specific dystrophies and cone specific autoimmune retinopathies, MERG, multifocal ERG is necessary. In CAR, the patients don't know they have cancer. So you have to go look for it. The most common cancer is small cell carcinoma of the lung, but it can be any any cancer really. In MAR, the patients have melanoma and they know they have melanoma. And so we still have to search for a recurrence or a metastasis, but MAR patients often know that they have melanoma. CAR patients don't know they have cancer. So we're gonna do full body scans on both of these patients to look for it. And the antibody can be detected in both cancer-associated perineoplastic retinopathies and in the non-perineoplastic autoimmune retinopathies and we normally send those antibodies out. The most common uh, antibodies uh, are anti-retinal antibodies that can be at various different levels in kilodaltons. And so on the Western blot, we can say how much the thing weighs, but often we don't know what the actual target protein is. So it'll be like 46 kilodaltons or 23 kilodaltons. But some of the antibodies, we know what the target is, like recovery or enolase or some other protein that has been identified. That's not as important as trying to recognize CAR versus non-CAR autoimmune retinopathy. So in summary, you should be thinking about autoimmune retinopathies in patients who have bilateral, symmetric, subacute, central or diffuse vision loss with a normal fundus. Over time, the nerve return pale, the arteries will get narrow, RPE change will occur, but in the beginning, it looks normal. We're going to send the perineoplastic antibodies. That's the one to send out test. And you're going to do the electrical test to confirm the, the localization, usually a combination of VEP, ERG, and or MERG. And the key in differentiating symptoms, photopsias, nyctalopia, hemorrhalinopia, which is day blindness, and the ring scotoma.